Hey everybody, welcome back to day three of my Flash Forge Adventure 5M experience. And if you remember where I left off last night, I let these print all night long. These are the other part, the second set of parts for the enclosure. The first set are down here. You can see I cleaned all the, the support off. The support came off really easily. I was actually kind of surprised. Only these small through holes were a bit of a challenge, but poked at it and prodded at it and it popped right off. And I'm really impressed with how they turned out. And they also numbered them. Can you see that? D1. So they, they, they numbered the part so you'd know where they would go. And so there you have it. Whoever designed these, now I haven't installed them yet. So the jury is still out, but um, I got to tell you something. And there's some, some, some of the support I have missed in those holes. Whoever designed these had more than just a single clue. They had a bunch of clues. So these on here are going to come off. I've got one more plate of small parts that has to be made out of PETG. And the rest is going to be PLA. And I have black PLA, high speed PLA. But um, I'm thinking maybe we want to make this out of a, some of these other parts out of a color. Okay, I got these parts off. And these next parts are now printing. So um, I am going to wait for that to print. And I am going to clean all of these up in the meantime. I put a fresh quick coat of hairspray on there. So far I haven't had any problems with things not sticking. I know some of you are gonna ask me why I use hairspray. Let me explain to you. It's cheap, it's fast, it's easy, and it cleans up with water, and I have never had any reason to regret using it, except when I try and push a bed up above about 90 C, then it kind of just turns to goo and doesn't work anymore. But for everything other than that, I haven't regretted it. I'm going to um, get these cleaned up. I'm going to wait for that to finish an hour and 45 minutes, it said. And so far, <laughs> as amazing as it sounds after my cure experience over the years, these parts have all printed faster than what the slicer has told me they were going to print. The eight hour prints were six hour prints, whereas cure, the eight hour prints would be 12 hour prints. So anyway, that's enough of Bash and Cura. I have always been annoyed at Cura, but no matter what I switched to, I always ended up going back to Cura, but obviously not going to be doing it here. So while I'm waiting for these parts to finish printing, I did get all of the um, support cleaned off of these and started getting a look at them. And I just got to just want to stop for a moment and give some props to the guy who designed this or girl who designed this. Um, this is somebody who not only had a clue, or more than a single clue, but also had a desire to make things nice. And um, look at the channel. This is part D1 and D2. Note the channel in the top of this piece, and I know it's black, it's probably hard to see. And then the projection in this piece, and now check out the fit. Look at that fit. I mean, I wish I could design parts like that. And you want to know something? I can design parts like that. But in my world, when something like this would take 12 to 18 hours to print, by the time I get to version number three, I said, you know what? That's probably good enough. This person didn't stop when it was just good enough. This person kept going until it was the way they wanted it, which was really nice and correct okay those pieces are done i'm going to get them off and i think i have made a command decision and i decided that i am going to use this old unopened roll of pearl series pla starship white from maker geeks who isn't around anymore i don't think they call for a nozzle of 235 so i'm guessing this is probably a pla plus i don't know i'm going to use it because i haven't used it for anything else and i think it's pretty cool looking this is going to be the first piece of the top out of the pearl series plo P plo pla and it is being sent from the printer and it does not seem to be functioning for some reason and no i just got an error saying that the coast refused it okay well 
just when I thought it was easy, I turned the printer off and back on and I re-sliced the plate and now it seems like it's working. Not sure what was going on there, but it wasn't a difficult fix. But we'll make sure it goes all the way through and starts. No, 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 it hasn't stopped again, has it? Error, it stopped again. All right, I've restarted the printer, restarted the computer, restarted the network, unloaded and reloaded everything I could think of. I'm going to try one more time, and if it fails again, then I'm going to try something else, maybe just a different print, and um, see if I can't figure out what's going on, but it looks like it's going to work this time. All right, I have no idea why it did all that, but it's not doing it now, so it's fixed. Well, for some reason, my print got about 22% of the way through, and it just stopped for no apparent reason. So, I've let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. It's still up to temperature. Don't know what's going on, so let's try to pause it and restart it. Okay, it's paused. Isn't the pause supposed to go away so I can restart? I mean, I'm two hours and 15 minutes in. I'd hate to have to completely restart it. But it appears to be not responding at all now. All right, well, let's, try, let's test out the... Um, the restart. So oh, powered off. Power it back on and see what it says. There was nothing near it. I was sitting in my chair over at my computer, and I just thought, hmm, awful, been awful quiet over there for a while. Looked around, and it wasn't moving. Well, let's see what happens. I'd hate to just throw that away. Do you want a recovery print? Yes, I want a recovery print. Okay, it's heating back up. Let's see if it starts back up again. Should have known there was something wrong with this print when it kept refused, the printer kept refusing to accept it. Okay, we are back up the temperature. Let's see if it'll continue printing. So far, that looks like no, that it is not going to continue. I think what I'm going to do is take this part and move it out of Orca and over in the flash print, just this single part, and um, see if I can print them one at a time over there, because obviously there's something about this part that isn't the printer doesn't like. Maybe I'll look at it in a G-code view or two, but yeah, it's, it's not going to print it. The mailman delivered me a part. I now have the .6 hardened steel nozzle for it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Okay, I have the .6 nozzle in. I have extruded some of the filament through it to make sure it's purged and loaded and ready to go. Back, everything's back on tight. I have sliced that part. That part was called riser B. I have loaded it into flash print. Get the infill to 25% instead of 40. 25% with the 0.6 nozzle and the 0.3 layer height. It is saying 3 hours and 27 minutes, which I like way better than 10 hours and 57 minutes. So I am going to tell it to send it. Printer shows it doing it. I want to win for the day. I don't want to end on a 
my three day initial three day adventure on a failure. Maybe that was my fault using the the um, beta beta version of Orca Slicer. I don't know, but I don't really want to fool with that around with that right now. I just want to win. I just want to complete it part to end this day. And right as that print started, I, I realized that I had put the point four nozzle back in instead of the point six. So I popped the point four out, and you see that bit of filament right hanging down in there. See how that's hanging crooked? That'll prevent you from put, putting that new nozzle in, at least for me, every time. There we go. Now you can slide the new nozzle in there. This time, make sure you're doing it, doing the right one. And it should slide right up in there and lock. Like that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy when that filament isn't in the way. Oh look, I'm purging the um the new point six nozzle and I noted that it came out with some red filament at first too, so there must be some test filament in these because so I guess the um I guess my thought that the other one had been used is is incorrect. Well I guess with the new nozzle I should also do the um the PI the leveling in the vibration test as well so let's go ahead and let it start that and yes there is a spot in machine settings to tell it what nozzle is in it it was on point four of course and now it is on point six so i did the vibration and leveling um i changed the nozzle to point six hopefully and yes i do have the point six nozzle in it because i'm holding the point four in my hand so i know now maybe I can start this print. We're going along nicely, and this is 25% infill, but I want to show you the previous one that failed. That is, whoops. So I seem to be having more problems on my third day than I did on my first or second day for some reason. Anyway, I stopped this last one. I kind of goofed it up and I stopped it, and it was my fault. But um, I couldn't figure out why this is 25% and this is 40 because I got to tell you this looks more like about 60% to me if not higher that or this is 10 or 15 but that's not what either of them say so anyway I've gone back to Orca Slicer one more time and I have set it at I have set it for the 0.6 millimeter nozzle I have left the 40% alone because I think something's wrong with this one and um, I'm trying again, so I'm having more trouble on my third day than I did on my my first day, and I'm not sure how much of that's my problem, probably most of it. So this time I had no problem with the, the part transferring across the network to the printer, and it's telling me pretty much the exact same amount of time that Flash Print told me, which is, you know, three, three hours and 45 minutes, compared to 10 hours and 57 for the 0.4 nozzle. You wouldn't think a 0.6 nozzle would make that much difference. But um, apparently it does. Anyway, we're going to find out if this is right this time. Like I say, it's, I'd like to have this last print of the day be successful. It's now 4.30. And um, so we'll know in uh, four hours. Okay, so I don't know what's going on, what went on with my earlier parts, and probably something I was doing, but if it was, I'm not 100% sure what, but that is a way better looking part than the original one that failed. That's not 40% infill. That down in there is 40% infill. This is the one that I messed up, which is 25, which I set it to, so... I'm much happier with that one down there at, you know, roughly four hours than I am this one, which would have been four hours, and this one, which would have been 11. So I'm um, very happy with that now. Hopefully it will go and not fail, and I'll have a good day, a good third day of this. Okay, there it is. It's all done after three hours and 37 minutes. And you know what? I think I'm going to print one of the other pieces of this. This was riser B. I think I'll print riser A tonight. Um, it is what? It is 8 o'clock now, so it'll be about 12.30 or so when it's done. 
And um, I'm not going to sum up my three-day experience tonight. I'm kind of tired. I think I'll come back in the morning with a rested brain and a fresh cup of coffee. And then we will sit down and talk about what my first three days with the Flash Forge Adventure 5M has been like.